Now, all managers must be focused on results, and results are accomplished by the people in the organization who do the work. <laughs> For this reason, the primary skill required to achieve peak performance results is the ability to energize the individuals and to have that team achieve its unit's goals. Now, that means that these individuals must lead their associates who are doing the work. For emphasis on this point, we can find no less than a source than the insightful author, statesman, and quite frankly, intellectual, John Gardner. Many writers on leadership take considerable pains to distinguish between leaders and managers. In the process, leaders generally end up looking like a cross between Napoleon and the Pied Piper, and managers like unimaginative clods. This troubles me, he says. I once heard it said of a man He's an utterly first-class manager, but there isn't a trace of the leader in him. I'm still looking for that man, and I'm beginning to believe that he does not exist. Every time I encounter utterly first-class managers, they turn out to have been quite a lot of the leader in them. Now, in my opinion, Gardner actually understates the point. Yeah, it is impossible for a successful manager in the long run, to be a bad leader. People will not continue to achieve for a failed leader. So again, the practice of leadership is as important at the first level of management as it is at the highest, maybe even more so.